Hey guys, how you doing? I'm in the middle of a project where I'm designing a uh, rear A-arm suspension for my Baja Bug. What I've got going on here is I've tried to design this rear suspension so that my pivot points will be roughly where my U-joints pivot because what I've determined is the, the, way, the reason that uh, running U-joints on these uh, bug transaxles, or really almost any transaxle, is that when you have a uh, when you have a swing arm setup, as the suspension comes down, it pulls. When you're when you're bouncing along and and you're not at extreme angles, there isn't a lot of uh, slippage in the spline here, and so that doesn't seem to be much of an issue. But when you reach the further ends of your travel, the spline will actually start traveling a good distance. And like if you're if you're at full droop and your spline's out pretty much, and let's let's say you're you're airborne, when you land, as that suspension compresses, it's going to push that spline in. And number one, that has to happen lightning quick, super quick. And what happens is and I can feel it right here. Right now, if I'm moving this in and out, it's a piece of cake. But if I put some twisting force on there, it actually, it actually adds a lot of torque to that. And what happens is, as, and that's just me twisting on it. So if you've actually got an engine twisting on this thing, then it makes the spline really hard to compress. And then what happens is, that force is pushed up through the drive shaft and ends up pushing on the side covers and the bearings on your transaxle. And so it'll start prematurely tearing them up. So what I want to do to eliminate that is I'm trying to design my rear suspension so that my pivot points are as close to where the U-joint pivot points are as possible. The closer I get them to those pivot points, then as my suspension travels, there should be very minimal spline movement. Um, because for example, if my U-joint pivot points were exactly in the same spot as my control arm pivot points, then as the drive shaft went up and down, there would be zero change in my uh, spline. And, and that would be great. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it exactly the same, but I'm gonna get it as close as I can. Then I'm gonna mock this up and I'm gonna see how much the splines move and, and see if I'm comfortable with, with what I've achieved. Um, so that's what I'm gonna start doing. However, to make it even more complicated, this is my micro stub axle. And this is the adapter that would typically bolt onto here. Now, that's fine, but as you can see, this, uh, the CV cup and the adapter pushes my U-joint out pretty far. Um, and the, the more it pushes that out, the shorter my drive shaft is. The shorter my drive shaft is, Number one, the farther away these pivot points are gonna be from the control arm pivot points. And number two, you know, every half inch, quarter inch, one inch, however you wanna look at it, every inch I shorten this drive shaft is just less travel that I can get out of the suspension. So what I'm going to try and do, and this is pretty experimental, is I'm going to try and cut this cup off around here and then cut this adapter probably somewhere around here and then I'm going to weld those together. So what I'm hoping that I'll be able to do is take this from being like this to maybe about like this, which should significantly shorten it up, bringing my U-joint pivot points closer to the pivot points on the uh, spindle and the control arm. So, that's what I'm gonna do now, see what I can get done, see what I can tear up with the bandsaw.
So I'm getting ready to cut this piece. This is the micro stub. I'm getting ready to cut it right around here. And I just want to show you that the first thing I did is I jigged it up in the bandsaw. And then I touched it with the bandsaw right where it's going to cut. And then, at least with my bandsaw, trying to cut on this radius surface, no matter how slowly I introduced the blade, it would have, it would have drifted in. Um, from experience, I know that I wouldn't have been able to prevent that. So what I did is I let the blade nick it so I knew where it was going to cut. And then I gouged a portion of it out with my grinder. So now the blade will sit in there and it won't be, it won't be starting on the radius surface. So here's my finished, um, I'm going to call it a yoke, <clears throat> um, you can see I TIG welded around the perimeter, TIG welded it because I'll get the most strength out of it that way. Um, I did shoot the MIG on the inside, I would have liked to have TIGged in there but I couldn't, I couldn't get in there, it's kind of like a little hole in there but with the MIG I was able to just run a circle in there just to get a little extra little extra penetration but I'm I'm expecting most of my strength to come from the outside weld um, it came out really nice it did net me some uh, extra length in my drive shaft this is the flange that I cut off of the adapter this is the flange that I cut off of the micro stub if I put them together and measure my cuts it's pulling me uh, two inches so it allows the drive shaft to become two inches longer which is fantastic um, but most importantly it will draw the pivot point of this u-joint two inches closer to the pivot point of the um, spindle it's still going to stick out a little bit farther than the actual pivot point of the spindle but this is literally as close as I can get it so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press the u-joint uh, back in here and take the drive shaft put this in the micro stub that's in the bug and then um, I'll put the drive shaft together I think I'm gonna have to lengthen the drive shaft but uh, once I get this in place I'll be able to see how much I need to lengthen it so I've test fit the drive shaft with the new yoke that I made and it seems to work pretty well um, although with um, with the new A-arm suspension, I put this in and measured it needs to be four and three quarters of an inch longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut this off right here. I'm going to try and cut it off so that I cut off the welds as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut this off and then I will uh, cut a new piece. This is one and three quarter inch OD. I'll cut a new piece that's four and three quarters of an inch wider and then I'll weld these pieces back on. So here we've got the drive shaft finally installed. We, I made the, the yoke yesterday, then this morning I extended this portion of the drive shaft um, four and three quarters of an inch. And actually that's, I kind of wish I would have gone an extra quarter inch longer because I wanted this to come all the way across the splines, but, but that's okay. Um, so uh, for the first time now, I've been able to actually install the drive shaft with my um, A-arm suspension setup, and so it's already told me a couple of things. First thing that it told me is that um, what we're looking at right here is the lower piece of the lower control arm, and when this is going to represent the upper portion, I was trying to keep the front face of my control arm flat. Um, 
The reason I was going to do that is it makes it easier to weld these bungs on without any warping. So if I put this piece of metal on top of the bungs, this is going to represent what the top, where the top of the control arm would be, and I can tell it actually interferes with the U joints. So what that tells me is I'm going to have to redesign this control arm with a little bit of a cutback right in this area here, so that there's a uh, there's a protrusion for the U joints. So. That's kind of a bummer, but I, I pretty much knew that this lower control arm was going to have to change by the time I got to the point where it was, it was final. Um, so that definitely means that, because I still might have to change something for where the shock absorber mounts, but I'm get, definitely gonna have to do a cutout here for the U-joint. Um, so it tells me that. I can now see, now that the drive shaft is in place, I can see where my pivot points are. Um, up here, my pivot point is pretty close to the pivot point of the control arm. Looks like it's about a half inch off, which there's not too much I can do about that. I'm not too worried about it because that's pretty close. Although if it was, if I really wanted to try and change that, I could shorten this a little bit, but I'm, I'm not too worried about that. On the spindle end here, I'm probably about an inch and a half off. However, that's why we shortened this yoke, is to try and get this pivot point as close to the control arm pivot point as we could, and we got that yoke as short as we could, so there's nothing that we can do with that. So, having this drive shaft in place, it lets me see how far down I'll be able to go. The U-joint binds right here. And then I would probably, with my limiting straps, bring it to about here. And on the up end, um, it goes it goes as high, like there's no limiting factor there because I can tell that it'll go higher than the than the tire will allow us. So there will be no limit. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm gonna start working on my next step. I hope this video helped you out. Maybe gave you some ideas. Whatever. Um, hope to see you in the next one.